Hello everyone and welcome to today's Kerbal Space Program recreation. Today we are re we, well we have recreated the space shuttle in Kerbal Space Program 2. The space shuttle of course being NASA's workhorse rocket from 1981 to 2011, putting numerous astronauts and payloads into space. Speaking of astronauts, we have our crew right here, Jeb, Bob, Bill, and Val, all ready to go to space today. But before we can go to space, we actually have to do a little bit of a setup here. You see, the um, space shuttle uh, is an off is it uses an offset center of thrust. So, whereas a normal rocket, you could just fly it straight up. We have a little bit something else we do. Right now, we're controlling it from the cockpit, but uh, we actually need to be controlling it from inside the external fuel tank at a probe core that is perpendicular to the center of thrust running through the center of mass. And so you will, in a few seconds, you'll notice me uh, move the little nav ball, just a hair, there we go, just moved it just like that. And we did that by pressing the action group one button with um, the new center of mass aligned, we can actually go ahead and launch the vehicle and get it going into space. And um, I think we're about to do that any second now. Yep, there we go. Lift off of the space shuttle. You can see a power sliding off the launch pad there due to that offset center of thrust. Um, but as I've sh as we stated before, the fact that we have the center of thrust going through the center of mass and also perpendicular to a probe core in the external fuel tank means that this vehicle is not going to wobble at all. Um, it's going to be incredibly stable. In fact, a little bit too stable. You'll see that in a couple kilometers. Um, well, right now, we're just coasting up to 2,000 kilometers, at which point we will do the uh, pitch over maneuver. And uh, we're now doing the pitch over maneuver, and this is what I was talking about. It's so stable that it really doesn't want to pitch over. In fact, we have to throttle down the vehicle just so the SRBs have enough leverage to push us over. Now. The actual space shuttle in real life actually did have to throttle down around this time, uh, but that was for max Q. It had nothing to do with um, pitching over. But we, we'll, we'll, we'll let this off as a very neat coincidence. But um, we basically want, we want to get to this, uh, I think it's a 45 degree line right there, and stop the vehicle right there, uh, throttle back up so we don't keep pitching down, and then we're just going to let this space shuttle stay right here just like this. Because. It's incredibly stable, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to—it's just going to be at this pitch, and it's just going to keep going all the way until booster separation, which should be coming up shortly. Now, uh, and one thing you may notice is that I've actually been managed to get heat shields on the wings. If you uh, see them right there, they, but the top of the wing is actually white which is um, quite interesting because you can't do that in KSP-2. So what I did was I actually put one of the blank heat shield wings and then clipped it into a white wing, and that allowed me to get a heat shield wing combo, which I think looks pretty cool. But there's actually two wings uh, in there, and they're both clipped together so they look like a heat shield with white uh, blankets. And uh, here we come up on booster separation. And boom, booster. There we go, there goes the boosters flying away so eloquently well one of them eloquently and there we go now one thing you may have missed is that we actually had to activate a second probe core this time in the engine section of the space shuttle uh, because we now have a new center of mass and a new center of thrust so we need a new probe core and um, this probe core I think I'm going to show it to you in just a second yep there it is it's right there in the engine section and it allows the all three engines to roll around that probe core meaning that we're going to be incredibly stable for the rest of the flight um, pro tip if you're making a space shuttle multiple probe cores aligned with the center of thrust at different points in the mission that's going to take you all the way to orbit without any wobble look at this thing this thing is going straight as an arrow it is not wobbling at all now of course now that we've changed its orientation, it's going to wobble a teeny bit, but nothing close to what would have been if we were just still controlling it from that cockpit. Um, we're actually still on the 90 degree mark, and we're still going to orbit, um, just like this. It's actually beautiful. Now, the um, actual video from this point forward until engine shutdown is actually 
pretty boring for a little bit because it's pretty much just this. So I'm actually going to cut it here and speed up the video so we can get to uh, engine shutdown and discuss what happens next. And there we have it, engine shutdown. Now, normally in the, well, as you can see, we're, we're doing a little bit of a relight because we are actually still deep inside the atmosphere. We're only at about 50 kilometers up. So we are gonna be doing some pushes with the engines just to keep us above 100 kilometers. But as far as you're concerned, we've achieved engine shutdown. Now, with the space shuttle, this would be it for the external fuel tank. They drop it here and they'd already be in orbit. But because KSP is a little bit different than real life, we actually can't get all the way to orbit on just a single burn. I wish we could. So we're gonna have to do another burn at Apoapsis. This burn at Apoapsis is I think like 126 meters per second. So it's actually something we could easily do with the OMS engines, but the OMS engines are really low thrust and I have plenty of liquid fuel remaining. So I'm just gonna do it with the um, SMA, the SSMEs and um, call it a day. And right here we're actually going to uh, pitch to a heads up position uh, just so we can show off the space shuttle a little bit better. Uh, get it in some of that nice sunlight. But yeah, here's our space shuttle in um, heads up orientation and look at it, it's beautiful. Right now I'm just planning the maneuver node and we're just going to speed past all of this time when we got to sit here and wait. T-minus 10 seconds until main engine ignition. And, uh, well, three, two, one, ignition! And there they go, the four KS, three KS-25 engines uh, doing their due diligence and um, pushing us all the way to orbit. And now, normally we'd just drop the external fuel tank right here, but I prefer to do that in the daytime so you guys can see how cool the external fuel tank looks when it's dropped away. So, we're going to speed around the planet real quick and get to a more optimal position. And here we are in a more optimal position, but we're gonna, we have one last probe core change we've gotta do. Uh, we should be coming up on that right in about now. There we go. And uh, we actually, what we just did is we clicked action group number three, and that put our control in the cockpit, as well as shutting down our main engines in preparation for separation. Speaking of separation, there we go. We're just gonna activate our RCS and separate ourselves from the external fuel tank. And now, my friends, the time has come to open the payload bay doors and release our payload. Now, our payload for today is just a generic satellite, just so we can put something into space for the video. But um, this space shuttle actually has an impressive uh, payload capacity. Uh, like an incredibly impressive payload capacity. Uh, one of the previous missions I flew before making this video, I was able to put 32 tons into orbit. 32. The real life space shuttle can only do 29. Um, and 32 tons is basically filling the entire payload bay with fuel. And so anything you want to put in this space shuttle's payload bay will get to orbit. And it's actually, it, uh, it's all thanks to the um, engines of the uh, space shuttle, which are really powerful. And so even when we have a 32 ton payload in our payload bay, those SRBs still aren't gonna pitch us over unless we want them to. Um, so yeah, that's the payload. And uh, as you can see, we've just deployed the payload and we're back to the space shuttle. Um, and I think this is where I've, I stopped recording because bringing the space shuttle back down is gonna be a whole different story. So I'm gonna go ahead and Cut the video right here, re-enter into KSP, bring that bird home, and then finish editing that bit, and then I should upload. So the next time you'll hear from me, this space shuttle will be back on Kerbin. See you then. And we're back. Um, the first thing we're going to do is uh, just 
orbit around Kerbin until we are in the right orientation to deorbit. Now, I could have done it on this next orbit. However, as you're going to see shortly, Kerbin is, well, I think I was going to show it to you. Okay, I could have done it right around here, but then I checked and saw that Kerbin was going to be in, you know, the night time, and I didn't want to do a landing at night, so what I ended up doing is just waiting until everything was in the daytime to perform the burns, and um, so we're just going to fast forward all through that real quick. And here we have our maneuver, and we should be orientating the space shuttle to be in the correct orientation for uh, OMS ignition. Now, the OMS engines we're using is the Puff monopropellant engine, uh, because that is the, ana the that is the analog to the space shuttle OMS engine in KSP. It's a small, low thrust monopropellant engine just like the space shuttle OMS and so that's what we're using here so naturally this burn is going to take quite a bit of time so again we will fast forward through all of that and get to the good stuff the coming home part and here we are T minus 10 seconds until um OMS ignition T minus 3 2 1 ignition and there we have it the main engines are well the OMS engines have ignited and this was going to take a minute and 30 seconds to burn and so i'm not going to bore you with all that once again we're just going to speed through everything because this re-entry process is very slow and there we have it oms shutdown we're now going to reorientate the space plane and get it on a uh trajectory to come home back to kirby All right, one last thing to do before we re-enter, and that is to close the payload bay doors, which we should be doing now. After this, it's just a coast down to uh, down to the ground, and um, I not really much to say about it. It's all pretty straightforward stuff. There's the mun right there, but um, yeah, this is gonna be a pretty slick ride home. And here we are, the runway is in our sights, and we are preparing to land. However, the, is the small issue that we are going way too fast. Um, so, as you can see here, I'm turning the vehicle every which way, trying to get it to um, slow down, and it looks like we're actually about to do it. It's coming right up on the runway. Things are looking excellent, except we've deployed the landing gear, and boom. So, remember a couple minutes ago how I told you I would be back on Kerbin uh, the next time you heard me? Well, I didn't say safely or in one piece. So, <laughs> I'm going to have to reload this real quickly and actually um, not come in so fast. Alright, we are back and not coming in so fast. Um, so, this time uh, we don't crash. Spoiler alert. I'm not sure I was expecting that to happen the first time, but we're actually doing pretty good. We're coming in nice and smooth, and um, yeah, I'm just going to let this play out for a little bit.
and here we are coming in for a landing on one of the smaller of the two run of the four runways. Uh, I wanted one of the big ones, but it's okay. This works just as fine. Um, and uh, we're going actually really slow. We're at 74 go going down meters per second. And um, yeah, you definitely want to be under 100 meters per second because I found that out the hard way several times. But uh, here we go. We're um, going in. We're going to touch the ground very soft. And boom, there we are. Now, that wasn't exactly a runway landing, but it was close enough. That was a lie. It wasn't close enough, so I activated the OMS engines and pushed us back onto the runway just because um, I needed a good shot for the end of the video. That's really it. And, well, that's the end of today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it because I enjoyed making it. So, um, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to give this video a like. And, hey, if you want to see other recreations, make sure to leave uh, your suggestions in the comments below. I do read all of them. So I guess um, thank you for watching and have a great one.